Good morning, everybody. It's great to see you. Great to be with you. I uh, hope you had a great uh, uh, week uh, following um, Resurrection Sunday. Uh, let's take this time and uh, let's uh, shake the hands of those around us. Well, good morning. It is great to have everybody here this morning. Uh, it is great to see the church family, and it is great to see guests. So if you're one of our guests this morning, um, we are honored that you're here today, uh, th be our guest here today. Uh, my name is Marty, one of the pastors here. Uh, guest, if there is anything that we can answer any questions about our church, anything we can be praying about, hopefully in one of the chairs in front of you there's a slip of paper. You could either fill that out. And after service, I'll be, uh, I usually am up here, or you can put it on the welcome table. But also, church family, if there's anything we can be praying about, please fill that out. Turn that in um, to us so that uh, we can be praying for you and what, uh, uh, what's going on in your life uh, as well. We're just grateful and thankful to have you here. Grateful and thankful also to have the church family and guests that are watching online uh, at this time as well. Man, we've got a great service today. We're going to continue our study in the, the book of Mark. Uh, Mark chapter 1, verses 40 through 45, it's a, it's a miracle story of where Jesus um, cleanses a man who has had leprosy for years, and so we're going to be looking at that and the implications, what that means uh, as well, but also exciting today is at the end of our service this morning, going to have a, a, a testimony that I can't wait for you to hear uh, this morning, and, uh, and then we will follow that up with a, a baptism this morning, and so today is a great day. Amen, church? Uh, let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much. Thank you for uh, just, man, the, the, the freedom that we have had to walk out of our homes and to gather together as a body of believers to uh, study your word. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for just, it's, it's, it's inspired, it's inerrant, it is flawless. Father, it is, as your word said, it is useful. Uh, and so, Lord, this morning, as we worship you in in, in prayer, as we worship you in your word, as we, as we worship you with our, our hearts and our voices, and as we worship by just celebrating uh, a, a transformational life, all because of Jesus. And so, Lord, we are grateful and thankful to be here, and Lord, we look forward to what we need to hear from you this morning. And all of God's people said, amen. Let's worship the Lord with our voices.
Righteousness, the great unchangeable I am, the King of glory and of grace. What in Himself I cannot die, my soul is soul is counted free. For God the just is satisfied. Just got the just is satisfied. Still look on him and pardon me. Still look on him and pardon me.
John 17 this morning, and um, John 17 verse uh, 5 uh, gives us this idea of Jesus um, as human, but it gives us this idea of Jesus as God, and uh, the thing about time uh, is time kind of freaks me out. Um, I could get lost on the last verse of uh, the opening song and get freaked out and forget the words. But I was thinking about uh, 10 years ago, you know, sometimes it feels like it was a long time ago, and sometimes it feels like it was yesterday. I don't need to go beyond a decade to be completely stressed out by time. Um, and in terms of, uh, of Jesus, we kind of, we tend to box him up a little bit um, in a lot of different areas in life and compartmentalize him. But one of the things we do is we compartmentalize his, his time. And uh, what this verse does is it unlocks uh, his deity. So he is uh, the man who is praying to God and, and talking about uh, the glorification uh, of himself and God through the death on the cross. But he is also something more. He's not just like you and I. He's something more. It says, and now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had with you before the world began. We're not... Serving a Savior who just was conjured up 2,000 years ago. That we've just been uh, kind of getting together and talking about uh, Easter for 2,000 years because um, that idea was only 2,000 years old. We're serving a Savior who has always been. He is God. Not just a man, but He is God. And um, so when we sing this song, we sing it often, and I love singing it with you. As well, but when we sing this song, think of as much as it might stress you out, think of the eternity of Jesus, not just from this point on, because we don't struggle with that as much, but think of the eternity of Jesus from this point backwards. And then you're starting to grasp the concept of who he is. And so let's sing this song together. You guys know it. You are good, you are good. When there's nothing good in me, you are love, you are love, on display for all to see. You are light, you are light, when the darkness closes in. You are hope, you are hope, you have covered all my sin. When my fear is crippling, you are true, you are true, even in my wandering, you are joy, you are joy, you're the reason that I sing, you are life, you are life, in you death has lost its sting.
that, turn that on, power that up, um, slide over, whatever you need to do, and if you're still able to remain standing as we read the, your, uh, the Word of God, Mark chapter 1, verses 40 through 40, uh, 45 is where we will be today. I've been walking through uh, the book of Mark. Um, Mark was written uh, by John Mark, who was actually a teenager. Uh, when Jesus was uh, those three years of his ministry. And so John Mark gets his writings from the preaching of the Apostle Peter. And so he is writing around late 50, early 60 AD to Christians that are in Rome, that are in Rome at that time, and all your history, are experiencing a great deal of persecution uh, for being believers. Um, but also what Mark is trying to, to do for them and help them, to equip them, to educate them, to encourage them, to strengthen them. Mark writes, helps us get a better understanding of who Jesus is. Who is Jesus? And, and so that's what I've loved about this. And we're going to see another side of Jesus today, that, that he is 
the compassionate one. Jesus is full of compassion, and we're going to see that in this story of him healing a man with leprosy. So let's look at that. Mark chapter 1, verse 40. A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus was indignant. He reached out his hand and he touched the man. I am willing, he said. Be clean. Immediately, the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. So Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you don't, don't, I was going to say do not, don't tell this to anyone. But go, show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. And instead, he went out, began to talk freely, spreading the news. And as a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stayed outside in lonely places. Yet, the people still came to him from everywhere. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this incredible story miraculous story of your power but also your power that substantiates the words the message the reason the purpose of Jesus so father help us as we dive into this help us better understand this story but lord help us better understand you the author the writer of this and I pray this your son's name amen and you may be seated And we do have children's church, so this morning, so if you have a child up through fifth grade, they can either stay in here with all of us uh, or attend children's church. Either way is perfectly fine. If you've spent any time studying the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, you know, and and we will discover as we continue, we've already seen a little bit uh, as we're just beginning this. They are full of stories, of miraculous stories, of healing, of physical healing, of of Jesus calming the storms, control over nature. And and there's, and everything studying this week, you know, there were many more that took place, but there's a reason that maybe one story is not in one gospel and it is another because of the purpose of that gospel, the writing of who the audience was and the significance of it. And so they all have a purpose, And and, and especially today, we're looking at a guy who is, and, and over in Luke chapter 5, Matthew 4 and Luke 5, they also give an account of this story. And Luke talks about him being fully covered or covered. And, and again, what we're learning with Mark, Mark's not much into detail. He likes to just get to the point. And he's also going to use the word immediate or at once, a very fast paced, because he wants to get to the cross. And so... What we see here, and this is another incredible story, but there's a purpose behind it. It's not so that just just the man can be healed, because if you notice, the wording that was used was not heal, it was cleanse. And there's a, yes, he is fully healed, leprosy is gone by the end of the story, but he says, cleanse me. Well, why is that? We'll, we'll, We'll look at that to help understand that, but... But the reason for the different stories, the miraculous stories throughout all of the different Gospels is is so that they substantiate, okay, they substantiate the message of Jesus, the truth of who Jesus really is. And so in this story, let's look at this story, okay, so this man has a dilemma. It says in verse 40, a man with leprosy came to him, begged him on his knees, says, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Now again, like I said, Luke 5 says he was covered. Okay, there's a, there's a, 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 one of the stuff I was finding, is that there's over 70 different skin diseases. But this guy more than likely had leprosy, and it was the worst of the worst case. And with Luke saying he was covered, meaning this guy was in a grave condition. This was like a dead man walking, okay? That means he's had it for a long period of time. That means it's more than likely internal, it is d- done disfiguring damage to his exterior. Leprosy also attacks the nervous system so he doesn't feel pain when he touches something hot or when he does something. Culture says this about leprosy, okay, or really any disease that, well, that's a consequence of a sin you've committed. So culturally, he believes he's been rejected by God. So physically, okay, health-wise, He's in bad shape. 
Spiritually, he thinks he's been rejected by God. But also, over in Leviticus 13, Leviticus 13 gives 46 verses about infectious diseases. And it says, if you have one, here are the steps that have to be taken to be considered well again or clean. And, and look at this passage, Luke cha- or Le- Leviticus chapter 13, 44 through 46, put that on the screen. Okay, This is what happens if you have a skin disease. It says, the man is dressed and is unclean. The priest, the priest in a sense, can, we're considered almost like health care. The priest shall pronounce him unclean because of the sore on his head. Okay, keep going. Anyone with such a defiling disease must wear torn clothes, let their hair be unkept, cover the lower part of their face, and cry out, unclean, unclean. How would you like to be this guy? For years, he feels like he's been rejected by God because of this, feels like this is a punishment for something he's done. He lives in isolation, no friends, no hope, no help, no medicine available, lives outside the city. He's not welcome. He's not able to attend the worship service, nor the gates of Jerusalem. He's in isolation. People are terrified of him because they believe this is contagious, so stay away from him. And, and as also said, you must, he, he must stay 50 paces, give or take, away from people because he's contagious. And when he's around he and, and comes across people, he must yell or say, unclean, unclean. Again, how would you like to be this guy? I mean, this is a hopeless, debil- debilitating, shameful, humiliating, lonely, hopeless life that this guy has been experiencing for years. So all of a sudden, this unwell, ostracized, unclean, unwanted, humiliated, disfigured, hopeless man has heard the news. There's this guy in Galilee, Capernaum, that is healing people. I mean, he's got nowhere else to turn. He's turned to everybody. He's been rejected. And so he goes and finds. So he goes to Jesus. That's a no-no. You don't do that. So the fact that he comes near Jesus, falls down. Look what it says. When he sees Jesus, man, he, he falls down and, and begs him. And over in Luke, it says he refers to him as Lord. He says, Lord, cleanse me. I mean, this guy comes with such desperation, faith, courage, and humility, but also confidence in this guy named Jesus that he's never met. Because here's the deal. He's been rejected. He's been turned away. He's considered an outcast. People don't spend any time with him. And and people he has turned to, they're not wasting their time on him. And what does our Savior Jesus do? I don't have time for you, dude. Sorry, you're out of luck. I'm too busy. Take a number. That's not what Jesus does, does it? Look at look what it says. 41, and Jesus was indignant. He reached out his hand and he touched the man. You don't do that. <laughs> because now you're considered unclean. Now let's, let's understand real quick, verse 41. Jesus was indignant. Because some of your translations may say Jesus was moved with compassion. And now those are two different words, I mean, meanings. Okay, so was Jesus indignant or was Jesus moved with compassion? Yes. Okay, yes. He's indignant, which is a form of anger. He's indignant because of the consequences and the brokenness that this man has lived with because of leprosy. But he's compassion, he's moved with compassion because what did Jesus say? He reached out his hand and touched the man. Again, you, you, they believe, okay, leprosy is contagious, so now Jesus is unclean. But also, Levitical law says you don't touch 
people that have skin diseases. And why did he do that? Because, again, going on the route because he touched him that he was moved with compassion. He was moved with compassion. Now, that's not just pity and empathy. Because Jesus felt the weight, the pain of what this man was going through. See, what Jesus did was way beyond sympathy and empathy, or I feel sorry for him. Jesus did something about it. Because it's going to benefit the recipient. That's the difference between just feeling sorry for somebody and actually doing something. It's about them. Jesus didn't care what, the, and we, as we continue our study in Mark, and if you've read the Gospels in the life of Jesus, Jesus is, is not in a rebellious or in an obstinate or in a, because uh, obviously Jesus never sinned. He was perfect. But he's going to challenge the religious leaders. He's going to challenge the law. This is the heart. And here's what I want us, to, where we're supposed to get, folks. See, Jesus felt the weight of this man's disease because Jesus knows all about rejection. And, this is, and Jesus is going to begin to experience more and more rejection as we continue on. Church, this is, this was, now listen, this was, and this still is the heart of Jesus. Amen? It's still the heart of Jesus to be moved with compassion. So let's look at Jesus. What is Jesus, what did he direct him to do? So verse 43, so Jesus sent him away at once. So immediately, there's that word Mark uses a lot. So Jesus sent him away at once, immediately, with a strong warning. So we can kind of see where this indignant comes from. So Jesus sends him away at once, immediately, a strong warning. And he says, see that you don't tell this to anyone. Now let's just think this through, okay? Let's just be real. Let's be human. You've had this contagious, infectious disease, you have no hope, you've been ostracized, you've been rejected, no one talks to you, you live alone, you live isolated, and Jesus says, tell no one. I don't know about you, I'm going to have a really hard time with that, right? <laughs> I know it's Jesus, I know he just healed me, but I'm going to have a really hard time walking 70 miles to where the priests are at at the temple so that they can declare me, by law he has to do that, so they can declare me cleansed. I can tell with my eyeballs and my feeling, I now have feeling. I now am not disfigured. I now have friends. I now have people that talk to me. I'm going to have a hard time not telling anybody. Well, what does the guy do? So Jesus gives him his, this directive. Because, because, by law, he was supposed to go to the priest. They were basically the ones that the health officials who determined and would examine him. Okay, that's 70 miles away. Because this is an incurable disease, okay, this is not happening. People aren't lining up and saying, hey, I was healed with leprosy and here was the, con the concoction. The, the, the point is, he wanted them him to go to the priest. So the priest priest knew that he was cleansed because it was about cleansing but they knew how he was cleansed the power of God in Jesus amen this is the beginning of his ministry and we're going to see more and more of this this is not about hey this guy's got free health care now and got what he wanted this is about substantiate now Jesus' message that he's going to be continuing on with is being supported back by his actions, his compassion, his cleansing. He wanted the priest to know the rea reality of Jesus' divine power and that the priest would either be convicted and believe or they would begin to condemn Jesus because he touched him and we're going to see that Jesus is going to do some amazing miracles and the religious leaders are going to be so focused on the fact that Jesus in their eyes did something he's not supposed to they're going to miss the miracle the man that was really in a sense the dead man walking is now walking and alive more than he has ever experienced in 
his life. And okay, then man's response, look at verse 45. Instead, he went out, he began to talk freely, spreading the news. And let's just call it what it is. What's he do? He disobeys Jesus. That's between him and Jesus. We'll let them have that conversation. But in his excitement and joy and enthusiasm, he begins to tell people about this. Here's the quick application for us. One is this, the heart of Jesus. Listen, church, the heart of Jesus, he was what? Moved with compassion. As followers of Christ, I hope we are moved with compassion, not just to do something for someone because we get, the wrong motive is because we get recognized or we feel good. But because I'm a follower of Jesus, that should move us to help people, to do things for people. Amen? Because of the spirit that resides in us, because we're followers of Jesus. See, and what I love about this story also, church, is there are so many people in the, back then, but even in this world today, that think Jesus is just, all, he's a, you know, he's a, a killjoy, he's about condemnation, he's about judgment, he's about rules and regulations. Yes, there are consequences to our decisions, okay? Yes, but... This is a beautiful picture and an accurate picture of who Jesus really is. That no one, no one is beyond his grace and mercy. Amen. I mean, let's go back to the leper. No one cares about him. He has to walk through town unclean, unclean. He has no hope. He's lonely. He's ostracized. He's been rejected. But he's not been rejected by Jesus. Amen. No one is rejected outside of those that reject Jesus. But this is a beautiful picture of our Savior because Jesus cared more about this person than anyone else did. And he was moved. He felt his pain. No one is beyond his love, grace, and mercy, and no one is beyond his reach. Amen, church? I love the words of Paul. Paul says this in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, follow to the church in Corinth. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Hey, church, man, this is a, may we be like that? Follow my example as we follow the example of Christ. And may we be moved because of the spirit that resides in us, because we're followers of Jesus. May we be moved with compassion for people so it benefits them not us leave us out of the equation but here's the second thing in this story Jesus demonstrates compassion because here's the deal about leprosy there's a comparison leprosy is just like sin okay it is leprosy is just like sin see it's lep leprosy spreads as it continues to spread there's there it's it, it, begin, it begins to go internal it defiles. There's no healing from le leprosy except through whom? Jesus. And who heals him? Jesus. See, sin will take us further than we want to go. Sin will charge us a higher price than we want to pay. And sin will keep us there longer than we want to stay. It's a heart issue. But who, who is the one? And the only one on the face of this earth ever that can forgive and heal us from our sin problem. What's his name? What's his name? Okay, just making sure. You see the, see the similarity? Leprosy is like sin. There is no healing or forgiveness from sin except through the blood of Jesus on the cross. Ephesians 1, 7, in him, we in Jesus, we have the redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Paul writes in Colossians 2, 14, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins. He took it away, nailing it to the cross. So here's the application. Have you nailed it to the cross? Have you given it to Jesus? The cross. The third thing is this. Look at verse 45. You notice what happens here? So G the leper is, lives outside of town, lonely, by himself. 
Jesus heals him. And notice what the leper then does, and notice where Jesus goes. Instead, he went out and began to talk freely, spreading the news. So now he's among the people. He's not experienced this in years. As a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stayed outside in lonely places. You see what took place there? See, Jesus demonstrates compassion just because leprosy is like sin, but Jesus demonstrates compassion because Jesus is our substitute. You see, they, in a sense, they traded places. Jesus is now outside of town, as it says, and we'll read that over and over many times. Remember, look over in Mark 135, just on the same page or the next page. Mark 135, very early in the morning while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the place, and went off to a solitary place. We will see that over and over as crowds keep coming to Jesus. They just want to treat him like a vending machine or Santa Claus. They just want something from him. Well, he's much greater than that, much more vital than that, much more important than that. And so we see Jesus, in a sense, trading places with this this man. It's a picture of substitution because he was the Lamb of God. He was a sacrificial lamb of the Passover, and he was the sacrifice that was on that day of atonement. That's what Jesus did for us. Skip, scripture informs us that all of us are sinners, Romans 3, 3, 23, all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the penalty for that, 6.23, is for the wages of that sin is death, separation. But Jesus has made a way to defile or eternal life. By being our substitute. Listen to these passages. 2 Corinthians 5.21. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. So that in him we might become the righteousness of God. 1 Peter 2.24. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross. Notice he took our sins with him on the cross. So that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. In Isaiah 53. He took up. Jesus took up our pain okay he took up our pain he bore our suffering yet we considered him punished by God stricken by him and afflicted but he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities the punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we're healed amen see what he did for us he took our place is what that means See, Jesus was rejected, which led to his crucifixion. Crucifixion led to his death. But his death led to his resurrection, which we celebrated. Celebrated last week, but we celebrate as believers every single day of our life. Amen, church? His resurrection substantiated the crucifixion. As I say all the time, if he doesn't rise from the grave, he's just another human brutally crucified on a cross. But because he rose from the grave, he substantiated, validated the significance and the purpose of the cross for our sins. His blood for our sins. Jesus put it all on his shoulder. He stood in our place, and he suffered, and he died in our place. And then the question is, have you trusted him? Four weeks ago, I had a gentleman who I've known for the 13 years that I've been here. Came up and wanted to talk to me. <clears throat> Danny, go ahead and come on up here. His name is Danny Hover, and many of you in this church, you know Danny. You, some of you in this church have known Danny longer than I've been here. Raised his kids in this church. I want you to hear Danny's story. How God didn't give up on him. And how God 
rescued. I'm going to give you this, okay? Danny, four weeks ago, who was, da who was Danny Hover for, for years up until before four weeks ago? I was dead. Why? Yeah, he's got I some. I was dead. There we go. I was dead, and I was lost to the world, to my own sins. But you've been in church your whole life. I thought I was saved when I was 11 years old. Kearney, Oklahoma, First Baptist Church. I was baptized. Talked to Jim Winninger. He was a preacher. But I did like a lot of other boys. Went to church camp. Thought it was the thing to do. Go get saved. But I was a heathen before I was 11. I was a heathen. After I was 11, I was a heathen right up to about four weeks ago when um, my heart was shattered. What happened four weeks ago? You've been sitting right over over here for all these years. I know your seat. I know where you sat over when we were in that building. Yeah. You're here a lot. Um, well, that we'll get to before, but that morning, um, Marty not preach fast enough <laughs> for me. I almost came up here before Marty even preached. I was convicted. I was passionate. I was I was changed. Mm. My heart hurt. Um just could not wait to bring that sorry piece of meat <laughs> to the altar and get a new piece of meat. This is my heart. Which um, I know when Marty said earlier there's going to be a testimony today and I know when he said it I was wondering, I wonder how many people think Danny Hoare's going to walk up into a testimony. <laughs> I don't think there very be many. <laughs> not very many. Probably none. Um, you want me to continue? On yeah. Um, they hear me all the time. I know. I hear you bad enough. <laughs> but I, I did tell Marty, I would sit in that chair wondering about what I was going to have for lunch. <laughs> Mom was predicting we were going to go out to eat. Uh, horrible. But um, you all are witnessing a miracle. I don't even know if you know it. I was dead. Um, and I was, I went ahead and finished myself off. Mason, let me back up just a little bit. Our church is under attack. The men, women in our church are under attack. There's too many people divorcing. There's too many people doing their own thing, doing what the world wants them to do, watching bad TV, reading bad books. Um, Jesus is all you need, and I'll get to that. Mark 6, I, Ron and I, we've been not getting along for, I don't know, a while. Mark 6, I went ahead and drove that nail into my craw. Mark 6, I looked her straight in the eye and I said, I'm leaving. I'm going to go do my own thing. I've been farming, working my whole life. And I'm going to get mine. I'm going to, I'm going to go get my life. Do what I want to do, drink what I want to drink, go where I want to go, see who I want to see, go from that. She looked right at me and said, Danny, don't do this. I said, I'm leaving. The, witness, or the miracle I'm going to tell you all, my wife don't lie. She might not be able to cook bacon. <laughs> and you asked Ivy, and my wife don't lie, but she did a great job this morning. My wife saw a dark shadow come over me. I packed my stuff, I went to the USDA, and I slept on the floor. Um, floor. Uh, didn't get no sleep. And I, I'm amongst family now, so I can tell you, I had to poop every hour. My shoulders hurt, my whole body ached. It hurt bad. But I, 
I was, and what I didn't know was pretty much the same thing was happening to Rhonda at our house. She couldn't get no sleep. And my son Jesse texted me. So let me back up. Rhonda texted Jesse at like three something in the morning. My son does not answer his text messages ever, hardly. But for some reason, <laughs> when Rhonda texted him, he knew. He knew, and he needed to reach out to his mom. Well, he texted me, but I didn't want to talk to him, so I waited, and I called him around 6.30. And uh, Jesse had compassion. He asked me, hey, Dad, what's going on? And I was like, I'm tired, you know, I'm tired. I'm going to, you know, see what happens, see what I'm going to do. So he just says, Dad, I love you. Uh, you've always been the man I've looked up to, which really broke my heart even, even then. It was just breaking me. I didn't even know it. But I was like, I'll talk to you later. So I went to Brahms to get some breakfast. Couldn't eat it. Nothing for my son to chew up today. So I worked the rest of the day, and it's like I am walking in quicksand. I'm walking in wet sand, and my shoulders are slumped. I, I don't, I'm not a, a big man, but I do have some strength. I, I work hard, but I just was really drawn down. So I go, must like Brahms a lot, so I went back to Brahms to get a hamburger for lunch. Couldn't eat it either, make maybe a quarter of it. And then I worked the rest of the day, my shoulders drawn down, heart hurting, walking in sand. Um, on the way home, I had to go to John Deere. My wife loves him. I say I go to John Deere because he's got green paint. You can go to John Deere and spend a lot of money. And then I needed to go talk to the Iowa tribe because we're in kind of a land issue with them. So I was doing all the stuff that Danny Hover still does. I was still doing that. But I was preparing for a fight. I was preparing to hold that sin that I wanted to hold in my hand. I had my sin. I had my wants, what I wanted to do. When I get to my mailbox, I get the mail. I look up at the house, and I'm expecting my son, both my daughter, son-in-law, daughter-in-law, father-in-law, mother-in-law. I mean, I'm expecting a lot of people at my house to to want to know, hey, what is going on with you? Why why are you doing this to us? So I look up at the house, and there's no cars there. So I thought that's kind of odd. Um it's bunco night. It's the first Thursday of the night, of the week, of the month. And Rhonda's supposed to go to bunco. That's what the teachers do. So I thought, well, maybe she wants bunco. So this is going to be pretty easy. I'm going to go in and get a change of clothes. I'm going to go up to my dad's house and uh, stay there. Well, I walk in the house, set my lunchbox down. I don't see anybody. This house is kind of dark. So as I walk through our foyer, I notice Rhonda's sitting there wrapped up in a blanket on the couch. And I walk over to our bar and set my lunchbox down, mail, go around the bar, and I sit in the chair. And she's, she just looks right at me. She goes, she goes, Danny, don't, don't do this. Don't do this to us. I love you, and I forgive you for every sin you've ever done to us. I still got that sin. I still got the sin in my hand. I said, no, no, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough for that. She's like, Danny, I, I love you and I forgive you. I said, no. I said, Rhonda, I got a sin I, I'm going to hit you with. She's 27 years old. I got a sin. I hit her with it. I hit her with that sin. And she looks me square in the eye and she says, Danny, I forgive you for everything you've ever done. Still got that sin in my hand. I said, no. I just, no, I just, I'm not letting go of it. And then she says, Danny, you remember what happened when we were teenagers over 40 years ago? 
is that true? And my heart broke. And I said, yes, it was true. I did that. And she said, Danny, I forgive you for that sin. And it dropped. Every bit of the weight on my shoulder dropped off everything drop and my wife said she saw that dark shadow leave me if that's not powerful if that don't encourage you that we serve a living savior i don't know what else i could say my heart hurt that's the only thing that hurt was my heart and she got up and she hugged me and this is where the, that, that hard part come I said, Rhonda, I'm not even a Christian. And she said, what? I said, I'm not a Christian. She said, you were saved and baptized. I said, no. Wasn't ever in my heart. Never had a change. Nancy Philpott said, when you get saved, you are going to have a change in your life. I'd never had that change. But at Thursday, my whole life changed for good because I went from death to life. Amen. I went from despair to hope. I had the joy to come back in my life, just like Teresa Elwood says, is to hold that joy in your life. Keep a hold of that joy because the devil wants that joy. He's coming after your joy and you cannot let him get it. We need to stand up for our church. We need to stand up for our Savior. We need to get into his word. We need to pray. I had my alarm set for 6 o'clock this morning. I woke up at 5.05 because I could not wait to read his word because he has been speaking to Rhonda and me. It's so funny because when we do our devotionals, <laughs> it's like they match up or my journal matches up with my devotional. And I've said something to Marty about Marty. Like, yeah, yeah, that happens all the time when you're in the word. <laughs> I was like, thanks, Marty. You know, <laughs> it just about kills me. But I will say, if you ever have had a doubt, if you were, I'm, I'm not saying when we were baptized when we were little, it's not working. But if you have a doubt, if you do not have Jesus Christ in your heart, if you have any question at all, I urge you, 25, 25 years I sat in this church and I sat like a knot on a log. I sat. I, I went to church camps, Sunday school. None of that is going to get you to the glory. None of that is going to save you. If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame for there is no difference between a Jew and a Gentile the same Lord is Lord of all richly blessed all who call on him for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved so I, I'm here to tell you don't be like the Israelites because if you're being nudged. If you're being nudged, I'm going to tell you who you're being nudged by. 
You're being touched by the king. Think about that. The king of our universe is touching you. He wants you. He's not, he don't, he's not saying, hey, by the way, you want to be a Christian? No. He wants a personal relationship with you. So if he's touching you, nudging you, don't send out those spies because those spies are going to come back to you and they're going to lie. They're going to say, oh, don't, don't go down forward. There's people that are going to watch you, scoff at you. They're going to say, oh, I know what he did last week. None of that matters. Be like Caleb, be like Joshua. Come down if you want to come to get saved because our church needs men. We don't need someone just fill in a chair. We need men to stand up. We need mothers to stand up. We need to fight this back. Because whether you know it or not, we are in a spiritual warfare. But we are we win the war. We win. Because you get into his word. And if you're not ashamed of Jesus Christ, stand up. Hold it up right now. Amen. <laughs> Marty. <laughs> Marty, you about ready to get wet? Do what? I said, Marty, you about ready to get wet? It's warm. Thank you all for listening to me. I love every one of y'all. Four weeks ago, Danny was a dead man walking, separated from Christ. But four weeks ago, Jesus changed his life, amen? Has Jesus changed your life? Have you let him in? Have you said yes to him? <laughs> the guy we talked about today, nobody spent any time with him. Nobody gave him any hope. They all rejected him. Not Jesus. Jesus has amazing grace, unbelievable mercy. No one is beyond the arms, the love, the mercy, the grace. Because Jesus went for the cro to the cross for all of us. Remember while he's on the cross, two guys there for six hours with him. Murders. Mocking him. watching that it yelled crucify him and Jesus word Father forgive him. what a great testimony of a life change and of a life that Jesus never gave up on what a great picture of find us and say, Pastor, I, I, I need Jesus. Or maybe afterwards, grab us. Or this week, call us. Our, our information is in the bulletin. And don't wait. Don't wait. Go. Lead us in this.
song. Nothing good in me. You are love. You are love on display for all to see. You are light. You are light when the darkness closes in. You are hope. You are hope. You have covered all my sin. You are peace. You are peace. When Fear is crippling. You are true. You are true. Even in my wandering, you are joy. You are joy. You're the reason that I sing. You are life. You are life. In you, death has lost its sting. No, I'm right to your
there we go. Sorry, Coy. Uh, Jesus said these words in Matthew, some of his last words before he ascends to heaven. Gives, a, gives the challenge to the church. Therefore, go make disciples. Tell them about Jesus and who he was and what he did for them. Okay, disciple them, teach them to obey everything. He says, go make disciples of all nations. He says, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And as you, as you read throughout the Acts for years, for 30-some years after that statement by Jesus, you see the message being proclaimed. You see people responding, becoming believers, followers of Jesus, and then baptism as a symbol, as identification, as a declaration, as a picture of an old life that is now new, of a, as it's a picture of the death, burial, and resurrection, and the death of the today, the death of the, the old Danny, and it's because of Jesus, the new Danny. And so we celebrate that today. Amen, church? So Danny, my new brother in Christ, <laughs> I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life. Um, but I'm encouraged this morning, and I'm also amped up and excited. Just what a testimony. Uh, I tell our youth this all the time. You're in a fight. If you don't know you're in a fight, you're losing the fight. So we as a church, we stood up. We have to fight back. And as, a, as your youth pastor, I'll tell you what our youth need is they need moms and dads and aunts and uncles and grandparents on fire for Jesus and paving the way and setting the example. So I want to challenge you, church, to keep doing that. You're never too far gone, that God just has a great plan for your life. Um, so, man, I'm just very encouraged and blessed this morning. I hope you are the same. If you have a bulletin, uh, just a couple things to highlight. Our normal Wednesday nights, we have classes for all of you. Uh, we have something for kids and youth and adults and different things offered so that you can just gain community and grow in God's word. Um, tonight from 5 to 6.30, we have our Fostering Hope Ministry. If you are just involved in the foster system in any way, parents of that, we offer that encouragement um, to families. So that is tonight from 5 to 6.30. If you have any questions about that, see Joe or Candace. Uh, a walk with Maverick, which ties into our church fellowship. On Sunday, April 21st, um, after the service, we're going to have a giant church fellowship of hamburgers and hot dogs. If you could please bring a chip or dessert, all donations will go to the Holt family. Uh, also, one of our youth slogans is, no one walks alone. So as a church, how can we rally together with the church brothers and sisters and a family and we can support them? So if you would like to come just right after service, we're going to have a huge church fellowship with food. Um, and all the donations will go to help benefit the whole family. So if you could just put that on your calendar and make that a priority. Um, uh, BGO Women's Retreat, April 19th to 20th. If you have any questions on that, see Tracy. Super Moms uh, coming up Tuesday, April 3rd at 6 p.m. Also see Tracy. Uh, your summer schedule, um, VBS will be here before you know it, June 3rd through the 7th. Uh, but we will need volunteers for that. So if you can help with that, please see Miss Kim. Falls Creek, June 24th through the 29th. That is grades 6 through 12. Um, if you want to know how to get your um, kids signed up, there's a QR code in the chapel that you can scan. If you don't know what a QR code is, uh, your child will teach you today. Um, so make sure you scan that. It's all online. The money is not due today. It's not due till June, but that'll get your spot reserved. And said so they are going fast. We're already about halfway there. So Cross Timbers, uh, July 8th through the 11th, and Seeker Springs Mission Trip, July 14th through the 19th. Um, if you guys need anything throughout the week, uh, please reach out. Um, as always, if you're a guest this morning, you can leave your chair. Uh, church family, if you would stack your chairs and put them against the wall. We hope you have a blessed Sunday. You're dismissed.